Whether you're looking for answers to specific life questions or seeking to become the best version of you possible, welcome to the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg podcast, where we offer insight, information, and strategies based upon research and years of practice as clinical psychologists. So sit back, have a listen, and get connected with our hosts, Dr. Bernie Wilkinson and Dr. Richard Marshall. Welcome back. Richard, today we're going to talk about an article that uh, was sent to me by someone who reads our blog and, and really? listens to the podcast. Yes, it, it's a, a, a blog that was written by uh, Myros Allegra, mm-hmm. I believe is how you pronounce the name, and it's called Abandon P- Helicopter Parenting, Embrace Negotiation Parenting. Fine. And it's a topic that we've talked about before. I was going to say, so we're not the only ones discussing this topic. Which is fantastic, okay. which That's is good. really why we, want, uh, we right. wanted to talk about it again, because we have talked about this a, a couple of times mm-hmm. now, uh, the concerns that we have over the, the, the movement towards helicopter parenting. Right. That's a concern of ours. The, the very sad phenomenon yes. of helicopter parenting, which started, um, I was thinking about this the other day, oh, it's, we were talking about it in class last night. And uh, we're talking about helicopter parents. And because um, I have, I have um, students in my class from other countries, mm-hmm. and we were discussing the difference between American parents mm-hmm. and parents from their mm-hmm. countries. And this concept of, of, they wanted to talk about this concept of helicopter parenting and what it is. And I was trying to think of when it started, when this phenomenon started. Yeah. And I'm guessing that it was sometime possibly in the 80s or early 90s. Okay. I'm, I'm thinking about, yeah. you're, you're, uh, you're a mere child then. But maybe, but your mother was not a helicopter parent. No, <laughs> she was a gunship helicopter parent. She was like, "Go, <laughs> right, that's right, go, yeah, bomb play, in the street." Um, so no, your mother certainly wasn't. But it was about that time, I think, mm-hmm. in the eighties, that this concept first came up, and I remember it happening with um, children's sports. Mm-hmm. Right, that's the first place I noticed that right. that parents were very, very involved in their children's sports in the late 80s and early 90s. And, right. and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that it also happened in school. Right. But the desire was to engineer your child's mm-hmm. childhood so that there would be no failure. Right. And protect them, their safety. Right. But also um, that they would experience no failures or no disappointments. Right. Well, what's great about this particular blog that we're talking about today is that they, they approach it from... Because we, we've talked about... That we've talked about the importance of experiencing failure and experiencing, you know, just some of that kind of, you know, win, win some, lose some type of perspective. Right, right. And they mentioned the importance of decision making. They, uh, this they, article, they, they right. in this article, mm-hmm. they mentioned the importance of decision making. Right. And, and that's another really important key aspect to healthy development is the, right. is the child's ability to learn how to make decisions with things. I, mm-hmm. I have patients, for example, who cannot make any decision right. at all. Right. You know, they're, they're, they're teens and preteens, and, mm-hmm. and they just cannot make any decision at all. And, and it's because, uh, for, for many of them, it's because they have this uh, hovering parent that makes all the decisions for them. That's to right. make sure that it's the right decision. To make sure it's the right. You guarantee that it's the right decision right. by having the adult make it. Yeah. No, presumably it's the right decision. Right. Well, it's at least the right decision for the parent. Right. right. And, and so, as they point out in this, in this blog, um, it, it is so important that kids have the opportunity to make decisions. And so they talk about a, a different parenting style called negotiation parenting. Right. And I'm sure that there are a lot of people who are listening to this podcast who are going to say, okay, I'm not negotiating with my kid. It's either my way or no way. And that's what we run into. Yeah. Because when I mention this to my, the families that I see, I said, well, you know, you could negotiate with it. There's no negotiation. Right. I'm the parent. Right. What is there to negotiate? Right. She will do what I tell her to do. That's my right. role as a parent. And, and, the, and the concern, of course, with that is, is that's very authoritarian. And, and we know the, the long-term consequences of authoritarian right. parenting. But we're not really talking about negotiation like, okay, uh, I want you to go to bed in 10 minutes. And they say, no, I want an hour. And you say, okay, well, how about in 15 minutes? We're not talking about that kind of negotiation. Right. Right. We're talking about negotiation like um, you need to be in bed in 30 minutes. Do you want to do this before you go to bed or do you want to go do this before first? You right. know, right. You're, you're giving options. You're letting them make decisions. 
but within some controlled boundaries. That's right. I think in this article, he mentions that you don't negotiate. There are some things, of course, that you don't negotiate. Right. I think one of them was cultural values. You right. Know. Um, there were, but there were some other things like um, uh, teenagers would say, well, I want my boyfriend to come home and sleep uh, in the house. You know, right. they're, they're, but there are young children in the house. So, right. so you have a college student who comes home for vacation and wants right. her boyfriend to come home. They're sleeping together at college right. and they want to do that at home. But you may not want that to happen because you have young children right. who aren't going to understand this relationship because the two of them aren't married. You don't, we're not talking about negotiating that sort of fundamental right. stuff. Right. Okay. But everything else is negotiable. Right. Yeah. Do you, you know, do you want to wear this or do you want to wear this? It's not, right. what do you want to wear today? When do you want to go to school today? Right. Yeah. There's right. no, do you want to go to school today? There's, you don't negotiate that. Right. You know? Right. When you go to school, are you going to wear this or are you going to right. wear this? Right. Do you want this for lunch or do you want this for lunch? Mm -hmm. It's not open ended. Um, what do you want for lunch? Because then they're going to, who knows what they'll say, and then if you don't have it, right. what are you going to do? Right. You're going to go out and, and purchase it. No, so we're not talking about negotiation that's completely open-ended. We're talking about negotiation within boundaries that the parent sets. And the other thing is, is that, please remember, is that the parent is still in charge of the negotiation. Right. What some the mistake some parents make is they negotiate on equal terms with the child right. and it gives the child a false sense of authority right because the child now feels that everything is negotiable right and that I and I can make a decision right it's still the parents decision right you know it's it's not as you said you you list the options right the parent lists the options the right. child gets to choose right and it's our, our job as parents to be somewhat adaptable. Yeah, right. Flexible. So, flexible. so we, when we have situations that we've created, mm -hmm. we have to be able to manage them. Right. So, you know, if you tell your child, okay, you know, hey, it's it's almost time for bed. You need to go brush your teeth, and this and this, you know, mm -hmm. steps one, two, and three, and the child says, well, I wanted to finish watching this show. Okay, that's the beginning of a negotiation. Right. And you as the parent need to decide what battle you're going to fight. That's right. Okay, so how much more time does the show have? Mm -hmm. But saying, right. you know, you can finish the show at the next commercial. Mm -hmm. You know, you go and brush your teeth and you can come in and finish. what. There, there's ways to, to, to adapt to those situations where you're negotiating. But again, you're not just letting the child have free run over whatever he or she wants to do. And it's not an either or. For the parent or for the child. Right. In other words, you're you're nearing bedtime and the child's in, engaged in a show. Right. Rather than saying you must stop now. Right. And the child saying I won't stop now. Mm -hmm. It's just either or. You say, okay, wait a minute. There's a commercial coming. Mm -hmm. At the commercial, let's brush your teeth. That's what we mean by negotiation. Right. Okay. And I know some of you are listening and saying, well, but but we watch everything that's recorded or we watch everything on Netflix and things like mm -hmm. that. So there are no commercials. That's fine. But pause what that it. means is that it has a pause button. Put a push so you, the pause you, button. So you, you put a pause and you say, you know what? You can finish your show, but you need to brush your teeth and everything. So mm -hmm. pause it. it. The faster you take care of that, right. the more time you have to finish your show before it's bedtime. And many parents believe that that's giving in to the child. Right. But what you're actually doing is you're teaching the child how to manage a schedule. Right. Now, they're going right. to be adults someday. And you want them to have this ability. So you're not giving in to your child. You're actually teaching your child a valuable life lesson. Absolutely. How to manage their schedule. Absolutely. When they're adults, they'll, they, they might say, okay, I'll pause it here, mm -hmm. go do my stuff, and then come back and finish it. That's a wonderful skill to teach your children. Absolutely. Okay. Perfect. So you're not giving in. You're, right. you're actually, it's a teaching lesson. Yeah. Yeah. So. I so love this article, though. It is. It's, it's a great article. And, and I've, I've contacted this group to see if you know yeah, if anybody would like to more. guest on the show and, and so we can talk more about their their right. perspectives with things so right. mm -hmm. uh, but that's it for today that's all yeah that's, that's all, all we get to do that's it so it was great right. talking with with you guys and talking about parenting we always like talking right. about parenting so right, right. all right so we will see you next time until then stay happy stay healthy and forget to be afraid mm -hmm.